Chair and uh, Senator Hyde Smith is next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Secretary Holland, for being here today. Um, Madam Secretary, the draft proposed program issued recently by the Interior Department, in my opinion, is full. It's just full of ambiguity and uncertainty for the oil and gas industry, ambiguity. And um, for instance, it indicates the department will consider up to 10 Gulf of Mexico lease sales plus the option for one sale in Alaska's Cook Inlet that we've talked about, but does not guarantee any. What are the odds that the department could break with the past precedent and exercise the option to hold zero lease sales as the proposed five-year lease plan is finalized? Thank you very much for the question, Senator. And uh, first, what I'll say is that um, we, we do have a 90-day public comment period. Um, uh, obviously, those comments that come in will be um, factored into any decisions that we make. And um, it's, it's, we will, I can't prejudge anything at this time, but I, I absolutely appreciate your perspective and, and know that we will, we will work to have a balanced approach to, um, to this issue. And um, happy to stay in touch with your office as we move forward. So you do think we will have some lease sales? I can't prejudge the, uh, I can't prejudge this issue uh, until we come to a decision. Uh, that will be after, uh, it, we will work on that more after the 90-day public comment period. Outer continental shelf oil and gas has lower greenhouse gas intensities than fossil fuels used to substitute for energy not produced in the Gulf. In Importing foreign energy also increases emissions because other countries sending us these resources have lower emission standards than we do. Are you aware that a no-sale option could in fact increase the price of all energy, oil, gas, coal, and electricity? Thank you for that comment, Senator. I, I appreciate that. So are you aware that it could increase the price of the energy, oil, natural gas, coal, and electricity is a question. Am I, well, I, I, and I, I am, I appreciate your perspective on this. Um, when we are talking about our five-year plan and our job um, at the Interior, um, it isn't. We don't take cost into consideration in that respect um, because we're focusing on uh, managing our natural resources. But because their standards are lower, their emission standards are lower, I mean, you don't agree that that could increase the price? Uh, Senator, I, I, I'd be happy to follow up with your office on that, on that if you would like. And I appreciate the question. And I appreciate the question, but I'd also appreciate an answer. Uh, what I could say is that um, I know that there's a lot that goes into the price of fuel, and I, I know it's expensive right now. Um, as I have said many times before, there are about 9,000 approved drilling permits across the country currently um, that are not being used. Um, 10.4 million acres of offshore federal waters already under lease. As of July, approximately three quarters of active leases on the OCS are non-producing. Um, I, I know that um, ev there's a lot that goes into considerations with the price of, of fuel, um, but I want to assure you that at the Department of the Interior, we're doing our jobs to um, uh, and following the law to move um, any of these issues forward. Okay. And talking about those leases, let's talk about permits. What is your department doing to streamline the approval of right-of-way permits so gathering lines can be installed more quickly on public lands and to help make sure companies can use those 9,000 federal permits the White House keeps referring to 
and capture methane during production? Thank you for the question. I, um, I've, I would love to uh, follow up on this question with your staff. I know that um, that, that is an, an issue. We take our job seriously, Senator. I, I know that um, um, it's important for us to, thank you. Uh, it is important for us to um, to move this issue forward, and uh, BOEM, uh, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, continues to advance permits for these activities, and 49 have been issued since November of 2020. Has there been the permits for those 49 issued as well? 49 permits have been issued since November. G and G permits have been issued since November of 2020. Of the leases, you have 49 permits? Uh, yes, ma'am, as I understand it. Okay, in your opinion, what is the earliest we can see a lease sale? I can't prejudge that. Your department has issued a draft plan to the public but has yet to file the request for information that I'm sure you're familiar with, which is the action that triggers the first 45-day comment period that is necessary. As you know, pre-leasing activities such as area identification, NEPA review, environmental impact statements, and other activities are allowed so work can begin as quickly as possible once the lease is finalized. Since your department is already well past deadline for conducting lease sales, what progress has been made inside your department on preparing a request for information on any pre-leasing documents to ensure the most efficient transaction once lease is finalized. Thank you, Senator. <clears throat> I just, I, I guess I, I want to um, just make sure that I uh, uh, mention the fact that the reason why this five-year plan I, is, ha has been late to begin with is because it was dropped by the last administration. They started it and didn't finish it. We picked it up after that. Um, they took no further action after releasing the draft proposed plan in 2018. Uh, so we're moving forward expeditiously on the next steps. We have two steps of five completed. Um, the, uh, we released the proposed program. Uh, on July 1st, uh, the environmental impact statement. We began the 90-day public comment period, as I have mentioned. Uh, that started on July 8th. And um, then we will incorporate input to develop um, and publish the proposed final program, uh, which can be approved by the secretary and adopted 60 days later following presidential and congressional consideration. So it's the last administration's fault, who, by the way, was energy independent? Thank you, Senator Hyde-Smith. Your time is uh, expired, but you're welcome to, to adopt.